you guys and welcome back to my channel how you guys doing i hope you're doing well very very well exponentially well yes what am i talking about i put some lip oh my god my lips are chapped anyway i hope you guys had a awesome that's not a hole it's not a hole it's like this yeah so today i do want to talk about and i feel like this is very important for any person who is trying to become a user experience designer you need to have a awesome port Portfolio. your portfolio is just as important if not more important probably more important than your resume especially first starting out as a ux designer your portfolio needs to be on point so in this video i want to give you seven tips on how to create a great user experience designer portfolio As we go through this video, I'm actually going to show you my actual portfolio that got me the job of being a user experience designer. It's literally the exact same portfolio. Not updated my portfolio yet. Um, it's been, ooh, it's been over a year since I've updated my portfolio. So this is literally the truth. Oh, <laughs> this is the portfolio that got me my job, okay? First, I wanna give the first tip of a UX designer portfolio. You have to remember, this is so, so important. So you know when you have a resume, Resume, right on average it takes a hiring manager they look at your resume and it takes them about five seconds to decide if they want to give you an interview or not they usually glance over it because they don't have much time on their hands to like look at every single detail so you need to make sure your portfolio has the same effect as your resume meaning that you show exactly what you want to show first it has to have a splash page very important splash page landing page whatever you want to call it the first thing you want to keep in mind with your portfolio you have to remember that it is like your resume or much more important than your resume and you want to make sure that you highlight the things that are very important and can be seen at a glance right so just like with your portfolio you want to make sure that the things that you want them to see is there is present at a glance let's go into my screen share first tip we want to create an actual website so we want to make sure that we have a url that people can actually visit and be able to view your portfolio we do not want to use any type of files powerpoint google documents whatever we want it to be a website why do we want it to be a website websites are fun it's easier it's better to um organize different things that you want people to see other than on a file some things can get missed it can be lost you want it to be at ease so think about it from a user perspective this will be your first project okay just it may not be your first project but it'll be one of the ones it's like your portfolio can actually be a project because you are thinking about how do i keep people connected into my portfolio Portfolio. Well, if I create a website, websites are familiar. It's a lot easier to navigate than a file that I may create, which people can understand as well, but they won't understand it as much as a website, right? Also, with the website, you can customize it to whatever of your liking. So, um, definitely create a portfolio with a URL that people can visit. So, a website so what can you use what type of tools can you use to actually create this website well and i'm going to give you guys like the first main tool that i was told to use but i chose not to and i'll tell you why in just a second but um so you can use website builders like drag and drop website like squarespace webflow wordpress <laughs> you can use those type of websites but i honestly do not recommend it from a ux designer perspective and you guys like i said i'm not gonna judge like you can choose to use a drag and drop website builder or you can actually create your own design i'm a user experience designer i want to create my own website from scratch duh why would i want to do that like i am a ux designer well, and UI designer, I wanna show my skills and I wanna show my personality. And the reason why I chose to design my own website 
from scratch is because I felt like I could not personalize it in a way with the website building tool. Like I felt like I could not customize it as much as I wanted to. It will just take a lot longer than I'm willing to like put towards something that's still not completely mine at the end of the day. So I actually created my website from scratch using Figma. In a later video, I'm gonna to explain to you how to actually create your website using Figma. What I use is a plugin to actually change my design straight from Figma and I transformed it into code. So there's a particular plugin that I used in order to do that and that's how I was able to create my website without actually coding it. I was able to to generate my design of my portfolio into a website within like 10 seconds with no code required. I know, right? Isn't that crazy? You guys keep watching my videos, I'll show you how I do it. So the second thing is you need to have a great landing page or splash page. So the point of a splash page and it being the first thing you see with someone clicks into your website is the fact that it is saying who you are, what you like doing, and for me to cross out the words users, because we use it a lot in the UX community, and putting people and putting different types of people. We have old people, we have young people, we have people of different colors. So that's important because that is what UX design is about. So I would suggest that everyone kind of use that. Um, I don't mind if you like, you know, take my idea, go ahead, you know, it's fine. But it's just kind of, it's just saying who I am as a person, showing my personality in a way and here to the right, I made this 3D figure. I did create this from scratch. I'm really not the type of person to put my face on the front page of anything. So I'd rather have like a little graphic here other than my face, just saying. But it's up to you. Whatever you like, just make sure you make this page about yourself. Next. And this is the main reason why I actually decided to design my portfolio from scratch. The case studies. I wanted them to look a certain way and flow a certain way and I felt like I could not do that with the web builder. It just wasn't going to happen. It was going to it was going to look very boring and very just dull it's nothing like exciting about it so this whole entire thing i need to create a template of this so you guys can use it but this whole entire thing i have i created on my own <laughs> and um yeah like i i created this whole entire thing on my own from scratch i would say i got some inspiration from my ux design course i took by google because they had a template as well it was kind of it was a powerpoint slide but i knew i did not want to add a powerpoint slide to my website i just wasn't going to do it so i ended up taking it and actually designing every single part by hand i wanted when people visited my site Seamless. I didn't want them to have to look for a link to this PowerPoint presentation. Like, who cares? Like, I recommend that you only showcase your best work. So, I know when you're first starting off, you don't have much work. So, UX certification product projects in there. But say that they are UX certification projects. And the reason why I recommend that is because most of the time they already know. Your projects will have... I feel like I'm getting like too deep into this right now. But your project will have like very similar flows and in the real world of ux that's just not what happens um you get a toolbox of methods you can use and then you can imp implement it and create your own ux design process there is literally no this is the process and this is how it has to be every single time there are different methods that you can use to gain insight on the users to digital experiences based upon that. It's not no one size fits all. So I feel it's best 
that you say which are your certification project and then have a few other maybe like two or three other projects that are outside of your certification it could be like for a client it can be for a client through volunteering it can be you just recreating a design just redesigning a already existing product you can add those as well but i think because of integrity and because they already know anyways that you just let them know that this was part of my certification and these are things that i've done on my own and these are things that I did for clients because they want to see that as well. It's not like, oh, I just did this for uh, because I did it for my certification. They actually show that you love UX design by showing other things you did on your own. Okay, and the next thing is you want a link to your About Me page. This is a picture of me. Ugh. I don't like that picture too much. But anyways, that I currently live in New York City. I actually was living in New York City. But anyways, um, I just have like a short description of myself and who I am. Nine things I love. Um, it's pretty easy to read. And I also have a link here to download my resume. I also have a link right here as well. And once again, we're talking about when we first get on the page, like what do you want to see? download my resume um also a little description about myself not living in new york anymore but um <laughs> that's not important so um here i do have a link to download my resume straight from my about me page and then next we have a contact page and here i just reiterated like my email address my phone number which i am going to blur out um my link a link to my LinkedIn profile and I also have these elements here that actually work. Yes, these work. When I show you guys how to build your portfolio using this plugin, somebody can actually contact you using this form right here. And once again, I, I did not use code. I did not code this out. This is all done straight through the plugin. This is the portfolio that got me the job, you guys. This is what got me the job. And I worked really hard on it. And I'm going to show you also how to do this as well. All right, you guys, thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you have, then you got a whole lot of great information on how to make a UX design portfolio from scratch. All right, check out, check out how I build my portfolio in Figma, and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye.